Good morning. That was weak. Good morning. Good morning. All right, there we are. I knew you were here. I just wanted to make sure I heard your voice. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has been good to us. We're thankful for all of his blessings on our life. And uh, we're going to get started here. But uh, if you allow us to, if you could stand with me, please. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. God knows our needs. Father in heaven, as we come before you today, we come in the name of Jesus. And we're so grateful and thankful, Father, for your provision for our life. We thank you, Father, that you're mindful of every action, everything that goes on, Father, in our lives and, Father, in the lives of this church. I pray in Jesus' name that you'd help us, Father, to continue in the fight, that we would run till the end of the race and, Father, hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of thy Lord. I pray your blessing, Father, on the songs we'll sing. Father, bless the message that we'll try and share. I pray that lives will be affected and changed for the better. Give us, dear Lord, what we need from you under your anointing and your power. Lord, we know that we can do more than we can even uh, think or ask. And I pray in Jesus' name that you meet every need. Touch those that watch us by Facebook, minister to their needs as well. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. us that we'll all be done with this. Amen. All this stuff we're doing here will be done. And uh, I just want to be able to worship him and praise him while I'm here so that when I get over there, I, I've had plenty of practice. <laughs> Amen? Amen. You know, some folks don't practice their worship too much, but I think we need to practice our worship and thank God for what he's given us in our hearts and in our lives. I want to know more about my Lord. All right? Sing it with us. All right? I'm traveling through
If you haven't started to do that, please. There's a song that says, Learning to Lean. Well, I learned to lean a long time ago, and I've been doing it ever since the Lord Jesus came into my heart and into my life. Have I fallen down? Who hasn't? Well, thank God he's always there to pick us back up, and I'm grateful for that. Amen. Word of God speak. You sing it when you sing it. Myself to him, and he goes, Nobody ever told me anything about God. He goes, But I love God, of course, and I want to learn all I can. He says, I was so excited Amen. to come here today. Amen. And you know what? Amen. It made my heart beat. Because you know what? We need Him in our life. Yes. And if you can discover that preciousness of Him in your life at a young age and live your whole life, Jesus Christ, what a blessing that would be. And so my prayer to God is that when we're done today, you'll say, hey, I know him. Amen. He's my Amen. Savior. He's my Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. But it's good to have you here, young man. We just appreciate yes. your already your testimony. All right. Um, you can be seated if you'd like to. I just, uh, this song just came to my mind this morning. I guess I can say it's came to my mind. I guess I was looking through the music and there it was. So, uh, 
kind of like the guy that was I uh, was reading about recently that was uh, he was in his office he was trying to prepare a message for uh, for the Sunday service he was a pastor and uh, he had been neglecting his wife and been neglecting his children and all kind of stuff and he was going through all kind of books and everything trying to figure out what he was going to share on Sunday and when he got all done through that he got to church on Sunday when he stood up and he said and the Lord spoke to me and and I thought, no, he didn't. You didn't even talk to him. You just tried to pick something out from someplace. And sometimes we steal stuff from sisters that aren't, and are, they're not our privilege to steal from. Now, there are some sisters, some, some of the wells that we can draw from, and it's okay because that's the person that we're in covenant with in our life. So. I can say what he says. He can say what I say because we're in covenant with one another. I'm not trying to steal from him. He's not trying to steal from me. We're just trying to share what God gives us in our spirit. And I never, never worry about hearing from heaven and Pastor Bishop. I, I know God's going to speak through him. And that lets me know that something happened before he got here. He was down there. Honest means seeking God. And that's what you have to do. You know, I think it was Tozer that said, Men do not have the right to speak to men about God until they spoke to God about men. And that's my prayer as well. But uh, I'm glad when Jesus Christ sees me, he sees me through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Looking down through
coming to see you, right?
other hard times. I have mine. But you know something? This week, I have had people come in the store and ask me to pray for them. I know God's working. I know he is. And I have a neighbor that I don't know what religion she is. I don't ask her. But she asks me every Saturday when she comes in the store, are you going to church tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to church tomorrow as long as a God will put me on these two feet. Amen. I'm going to go. Sometimes I can't drive, so I'm not on those two feet. But I want to thank you for this church. And I want to thank you for bringing me as far as you have, and you do, with your, with your uh, sermons, you and Brother Chris. I want to thank you because I am putting the word out. And I know that God's working. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Peggy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I always like to hear that. Hallelujah. Amen. People are sharing what they have. The people that are in our world. Amen. If you have something that is precious, a lot of times you want to hang on to it, but God give you what he give you in his salvation Amen. for you to share it with Amen. other people. Amen. That, Amen. That's our job. That's our calling. That's what God has put within each one of us. That's why the ministry of the saints is so important. It's one thing for me to preach or for any other brother, whether Pastor Chris or Joe or whoever, it's one thing for us to preach, but it's another thing for you to receive it Amen. and then put it into practice. Amen. Because if we can preach all kind of stuff and say all kind of things and try to pour into you everything we possibly can, but if you don't receive it and then begin to share it, then it's falling on deaf ears. And my heart is, is that your ears would be open, your eyes would be open, and your heart would be ready to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody. You go, well, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be. That's right. The Bible said that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. And Amen. so if you're going to be an overcomer, you're going to overcome by the word Amen. of your testimony. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles and you want to read with me, go to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Father, I ask your blessing on the reading of your word and also the preaching of this gospel that it may find a lodging place in each one of our hearts so that we might be made better because of it, that there would be a holy boldness that would come upon each one of us to be able to stand in the midst of storm and struggle and even the darkness that's in our world right now and to proclaim the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Help us today, Lord, to be a witness, dear Lord, for you said when the Holy Spirit has come upon us, we would be a witness in Judea, Samaria, dear Lord, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. I pray, Father, that that message that began way back then, Father, would continue in the years that are ahead of us, and that someone, dear Lord, may pick up the torch and carry it, Father, with a boldness and with an excitement and with a joy and with a confidence, knowing that you're with them in all they say and do. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, uh, I have a title for this message, and I pray that I can stick with it somehow. But I want to talk to you this morning uh, about a subject that uh, I don't think too many people talk about. Uh, but I want to talk to you about generational blessing. Generational blessings. If, let me read the scripture here. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Are you in 2 Timothy 2? Yes. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Amen. Say oh me if you're not. Amen, amen. <laughs> gotcha. Now, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness 
as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him, meaning Jesus, who had chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man also strive for masteries, or if they're in some kind of athletic competition, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. You can't cheat in this relationship. You got to keep following Jesus hook, line, and sinker, all right? It is said, the husbandman that laboreth must be first a partaker of the fruits. In other words, if you plant a garden, you don't give anything away until you eat some of it yourself. Yes. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. You know, God's giving us stuff to eat spiritually. And we need to make sure that we partake of it because once you partake of it, it becomes part of who you are so that you can use it to reach into the lives of people that are in your circle of friends. You're going to have a circle of people that are around you and they're sometimes going to be looking for somebody to tell them about the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And guess what? That's your job. I know that doesn't set well with folks. I think I'll just get them to church and let my preacher talk to them. You know how much pressure you put on the preacher? And you tell him, hey, I got a friend coming. I don't know what to say to him, so can you talk to him? Listen, the Bible said, let every man give an answer of the hope that is in him. If you've got a hope in you, which your hope is in Jesus Christ, and you know that one day heaven will be your home, that's what you share. You share what God did for you. Yes. You hold, open up your mouth and speak how you got saved, Amen. how God changed your life, how he turned you around Amen. and got you going. Because this relationship that we have with Jesus Christ has to become generational. Y'all are awful quiet. Miss yeah. Sandy, sitting in the back there that just sang that song, poured her whole life into her children so that they might serve the same Jesus that she does. Amen. And now she has another opportunity. She takes what she has learned and Poured into Lisa and to Ed, and now she's pouring it into William. Amen. Letting him understand and know that this relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing in her life. Amen. Amen. It should be the same way for all of us. Yes. You've got to tell your children about Jesus. Amen. If this thing's going to become generational, if it's going to come to a place where then somebody picks up the torch and carries it, it's going to have to be us sharing it with people that we are in contact with, people that are, what I said earlier, in our circle of friends. Amen. 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 Young Landon, this morning, he comes in here because Roger said, okay, you want to go to church? He goes, yeah. Moving from where he's at to try to move into the heart and life of a young man to say, hey, there is a way to find Jesus Amen. if you're really hungry. Amen. Amen. I believe in generational blessings. As goes one generation, so goes the next. Ungodliness will always produce more ungodliness. True. Righteousness will produce more righteousness. Amen. It is important for us to understand from the book of Proverbs chapter 14, 34, it said, Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. If we are going to have a next generation come up behind us that's going to be willing to carry this gospel, whether it's in song, whether it's in the preaching, whether it's in the everyday witness of a ministering saint, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen because we pass it from us to another generation. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. All through the scriptures, all through the scriptures, the blessing of God came from Father the son. It fell down in that order 
They got blessed by their dad. I remember Jacob, when he called all of his sons in, he brought them all in. He was fixing to die. He, he had done everything he could to prepare them for what was they were going to be facing in the future. He had a couple of boys there that were kind of mean, and they had killed a whole bunch of people, and he pronounced a blessing on all of his sons, but those two. He said, you guys are bloody men to me. You, you've made me a reproach to people. You, you've caused people to not like us because of what you did. And so he could not bless them. When we want to make this thing go farther, you don't know how encouraged I am when I see my son come. My sons. I'll put it that way. My sons that are here this morning. When they come, I want this to be passed on to them. Amen. I want them to know that the anointing that God has given me, I want to lay my hands on them and say, here, you can have a portion of this. When we uh, ordained Pastor Chris into the ministry and Pastor Joe into the ministry, we brought them up front and I laid my hands on them and I said, if there's anointing on me, I want some of it to pass to you. That's what God did in the beginning and that what I believe is God is still doing today. That's why this thing is still continued through the years is because God had somebody else to come up behind the person that he started with and kept carrying the torch. Amen. 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 Are you all okay? God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, speaking to the children of Israel. He said, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which I saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. In other words, he spoke in their circle. Can you accept that? Yes. He said, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken, and I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. He said, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know my people, doth not consider. Ah, oh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Yet will you will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointments. It's like Isaiah saying, listen, I, I don't know what I did to cause you to fall so far away. He said, what I see is just a really sick people. I think God looks down sometimes and he sees a really sick people church. You become entertainment oriented. Tickle my fancy. Make me laugh. Turn me on. Whatever word you might want to use. I, I don't want to turn you on unless I turn you on to Jesus. I don't want you to become excited about the song unless you sense the power and the presence of God in the song. I don't want you to say amen to the preaching if you can't apply it to your own life. Because we might say amen, but that's what the children of Israel were doing. They were saying amen to what was going on, but they wouldn't live right. It said farther, it said, Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour in it your presence, and it's desolate. As overthrown by strangers. Sounds like America. We're being overthrown by strangers. True. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some of you watch the news, I think. Yes. From time to time. You may not like it. But you don't want to walk around like an ostrich with your head in the sand. You need to know what's going on. God wants to show us what's coming so that we can be prepared for it. That's right. Yes. you got to put on the whole armor of God. It's, it's not time to be you know, playing spiritual tiddlywings. It's time to get serious about our relationship with our Lord and Savior. And he said, and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. In other words, you had everything and now you're just living in a little old shack outside of town. As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, except the Lord of hosts has left us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like Gomorrah. God was saying to them, listen, 
If God didn't save a remnant, I was talking to Sandy this morning, and we were talking about our church family, our church, I feel like we are a family, and I said, I would like to think, and I hope it's true, and I believe it is, that this is part of the remnant that's going to make it to the other side. Amen. Why, Pastor? Because I'm going to make sure that I tell you everything that I can about God and about the gospel and about Jesus Christ so that you can get a good handle on what's going on in your own personal life so that you'll be strong enough to stand when the storms of life come. Amen. They're coming. God looks at Israel and he compares them to Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of God, ye people of Gomorrah. Now he's been talking to Israel the whole time and yet all of a sudden he switches over and he's talking about that cities, those twin cities that got destroyed by fire and brimstone. And he said, listen, this is what you look like to me. He said, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bulls or of the lambs or of he goats. In other words, God said, I'm sick of the sacrifice. I want you to obey me. The sacrifices were to get them to a place where that they would obey God. And yet they kept bringing the sacrifices, but they wouldn't obey God. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to, uh, to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. There are a trouble, there are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make Many prayers I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings before mine eyes. Evil, cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God said, look, I got this issue with you. And, but I want to fix it. That's right. Amen. He really does. Amen. Amen. Anybody, are you here with me today? Yes. You yes. See, feel any conviction in your heart saying, listen, I, I, I got to, there's, there's some changes that need to be made in me. I got a family. I got children. I've got grandchildren. I've got close friends. They need to be able to hear about this Jesus that I love. Amen. Amen. God, please. Amen. This, this needs to be our prayer. God, please yes. give me a holy boldness. Yes. Yes. Help me not to be backward nor bashful when I talk to my children or to my grandchildren. You can, you can talk to my grandchildren and, and they will tell you when I say to them, I want you to live for God. I don't care about anything else. I want you to live for God. That's more important. I want my children to follow Jesus. I want them to follow him all the way to the end. If I die tomorrow, I pray that they wouldn't lose sight of their relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The reason people lose sight of their relationship with Jesus Christ is because they weren't taught where they should have been. That's right. It's true. Love your children to the place that you will love them into heaven. Amen. Amen. Good word. Hear me? Good word. Love your children to the place where you'll love them into heaven. Amen. Don't coddle. Don't play. Just tell them flat out. Listen, heaven is real and so is hell. That's right. That's you say, well, I don't believe in hell. Well, about 30 seconds after you get there, you will. <laughs> The Apostle Paul admonishes Timothy to pass on the message of salvation to his generation and not to waver. Pass it on, Timothy. He told him to remember his upbringing in the house of his grandmother and mother. 
Paul called him his son in the faith, not because he had won him to the Lord, but because he had seen in him a man of like faith. Timothy heard the preaching of Paul and it birthed in him a desire to pass it on to others. He loved Timothy as a father would love a son. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. He wanted him to stay strong. Caleb, I want you to stay strong. Timmy, I want you to stay strong. I, I don't want you to lose sight of the finish line because it's coming. That's right. It may get here before we know it. That's right. It says, you know, it says here, just like the father of the prodigal loved his wayward son, it said, when the prodigal arose, he came to his father, and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He wasn't mad because he took his inheritance. He wasn't mad because he left home. He wasn't mad because he wasted all of his living. He was so happy to have him back home that he ran to him and kissed him. Put a robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. Put shoes on his feet. <coughs> Some, he, he, his son even said to him, I'm not, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. I've messed up so bad. I've done so many horrible things. How many of us have had to say the same thing about ourselves? I've been so bad. I've done so many wrong things. But guess what? Jesus Christ saved you and forgave you for every single one of those things. And you are a brand new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. He doesn't hold grudges. He doesn't stay mad. Yes. Yes. If you'll repent, yes. he'll change yes. your life. Yes. 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 Listen, every generation, I got some stuff wrote down here. I feel like the Lord gave me. I just I need to share it with you. Every generation has had ministers of righteousness to proclaim the gospel so that the generations to come would have an opportunity to know Christ. I am so glad for those guys that blazed the trail. Amen. Amen. I would like to give a shout out to the men of God who finished their race and passed on to men like me their wisdom, their knowledge, and yes, even their anointing. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the Bible says in 2 Timothy 121. For the prophecy came not of old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Talking about the Word of God when it was being written, God moved them. But God did not stop moving on men after the Bible was written. I, I, I don't understand people say, well, I just need to read the Bible. Yeah, well, you do need to read the Bible, but you need to understand something. God wants to anoint you and breathe things into you that maybe you could not have ever learned on your own. It's happened in my own personal life. Amen. I believe revelation. I wrote this down, but I believe revelation is progressive. Amen. Amen. And sometimes, and hear what I'm going to say, and try to chew on it, and swallow it, and digest it if you can. But some things were reserved for specific times and manifested in their season. I believe that. I believe that. I'm going to say that one more time. I believe Revelation is progressive. And some things were reserved for specific times and manifested in their season. Is there anybody in here that would lift your hand and say, I've changed my mind on some things since I followed Jesus? Amen. 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 There were some things that I may have been taught when I was a wee tot in the church that I came out of. And then all of a sudden I grew up and some of those things started to not make any sense to me. And all of a sudden I said, wait a minute, I need to have a, a stronger, a deeper revelation. I need to understand God in a greater capacity. And so you moved out of where you are into wherever you might be now because God was revealing things to you that you did not know before. Listen, I have learned things in my season of ministry by anointed men of God that I may have never learned on my own. I pray what I have learned I can pass on to the next generation so that the gospel of Christ may continue to grow and bear much fruit. The school of Christ 
is a school we may never graduate from. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I've got. I just thought that was great. That's right. Amen. That's right. As old Jeff Bodine said, I, I graduated. <laughs> I haven't graduated. Because it says in Romans 11, 33, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. There's just some things that's going to take us a while to begin to understand and begin to know. Don't lose heart if you don't understand it right now. Don't lose heart when you read the Bible and you say, I just can't understand it. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. And God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, will begin to manifest himself to you. And he will begin to give you interpretation of Scripture that you never thought you could get because that's what God wants to do. He wants to grow you up. He doesn't mean for you to stay a baby. He doesn't mean for you to stay a little toddler. He doesn't mean for you to stay a teenager. He wants you to graduate into a full-grown, blood-bought, born-again, spirit-filled child of God. Amen. 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 Who? Glory. <laughs> Take it, please. I think I am. In John 9, verses 2 through 12, or Job 9, I mean, I'm sorry, Job 9. If you want to turn there, you can, but just trust me, it's there. I know it is so the truth. But how should, man be how should a man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. In other words, if you try to get into conversation with God and he starts asking you questions, most of the time you're going to go, I don't know. I don't know. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. He hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered which removeth the mountains and they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof trouble, which commandeth the sun and it riseth not and sealeth up the stars, which alone speaketh out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades and the chambers of the south, which God doth things past finding out, yea, and the wonders without number. He goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth also, uh, passeth out also, but I perceive him not. Behold, he taketh away. Who can hinder him? And who will say unto him, what are you doing? I mean, I know it says in the King James, what doest thou? He said, what are you doing? Everybody says, I think, I think. You don't have scripture to back it up. I don't care what you think. <coughs> that was cr cruel, wasn't it? But if you can't back it up with scripture, I don't care what you think. Well, I think God's this way. Listen, his word tells If you want to see what God looks like, look at Jesus. Go read the red. Go read the red. Read the things that Jesus said. That's what God looks like. Compassion, he's loving, he's long suffering, he's merciful, he's got all those attributes, and yet he's also just. And he will not allow sin to enter heaven. I don't care who you are or what your name is, if you're going to get to heaven, you're going to get there because the blood has been applied. Amen. 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 That's why when you make a mistake, it's okay because you can go to him and ask for forgiveness. And guess what? His blood will cover a multitude of sin. He covers it. He just washes it away. It's it's, it's mind-boggling to me how the, all the junk and all the, the garbage and all the stuff that was in my life before Jesus, it's cast as far as the east is from the west. And I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but the east never comes to an end. It just keeps going east and east. And he said, and, and then there's, there's the west. It just keeps going west. I mean... He cast him as far as the east is from the west. Never, Scripture says, never to be remembered against you again. Hallelujah. When the devil comes to you and says, you're not saved. Remind him of that east-west thing. Remind him of that. That's right. He threw him east and threw him west. And in fact, Scripture says he threw him into the sea of forgetfulness. I don't know what that sea looks like, but I'm sure it's got pretty full over time. Don't you think? I think my sins alone could have filled it up. 
Anybody feel like me? <laughs> yes. They're in a sea of forgetfulness. And if you come to him next week and say, God, do you remember what I did back in 1973? He goes, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. That's gone. It's gone. Quit dwelling on it. Quit letting the devil beat you up with it. Quit letting the devil tell you that God's still mad at you about whatever you did back so and so and what time. Just tell him, listen, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free because the blood of Jesus has made me free. Amen. 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 Isaiah 28, 9 through 11, I'll try and close with this. It says, uh, whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make understand doctrine? He's asking a question. Who's God going to teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who's he going to do that for? He said, and this is a very important part of this message, so I want you to hear me. Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. That's who's going to learn. And what he's saying is quit being a baby. Quit falling apart every time something goes wrong. Amen. Amen. I had some things fall apart for me this week. And I just and I, and I just want to give a shout out to Rutha. She so, so encouraged me. I was here Wednesday night praying and seeking God concerning some things. She just walked by me very gently, laid her hand. I was kneeling right there. She laid her hand on my shoulder, and she said, everything's going to be all right. I mean, it was like there was a load just got lifted. I don't understand some things. And I know I'm not the smartest person in the world. But I believe this. You can take it for what it's worth. I believe God has taught me some things that I can teach you Amen. if you'll hang in here with me. Amen. Amen. Because I want to grow you up. I do. Amen. Amen. I want when the devil shows up, you'll be like, uh, who was it? Smith Wigglesworth? I can't remember who it was exactly, but his wife was dying and he raised her from the dead. <laughs> that, that was something. And she looked up and she goes, Smith, what are you doing? He said, well, honey, I need you. He goes, she goes, but he's calling me. <laughs> and she laid back down and died. Went home to be in heaven. There's <laughs> another gentleman that was laying in bed one night and he felt a, a darkness up. A horrible spirit just come into his room. Forget the guys. It could have been Moody. Could have been, could have been, it could have been one of those guys. Anyway, I read this story and he said, all of a sudden he felt this darkness come into the room and he said, and it woke him up. And he said, I just shook myself and he said, I looked over and he said, there stood the devil. And he said, hmm, it's only you. Went back to sleep. He learned that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He wasn't scared of the devil. You don't need to be either. That's right. That's right. Well, say, brother, there's some pretty scary things out there. That's why Jesus lives inside your heart. Amen. He's there to help you get through everything. Amen. You want to make the devil run? Send Jesus. And somebody said, the devil's been driving me over. Get the saddle off your back. <laughs> run to Jesus. Satan comes to your door, send Jesus to answer. Amen. <laughs> don't, don't go yourself. In our own strength, we can do nothing. But with Jesus, all things are possible. Amen. Yes. Get yourself weaned from the milk and get yourself drawn away from the breast. For 
Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. In other words, God's going to talk to you and he's going to teach you things line upon line. And then there's going to be another line under that line and another line under that line. There's going to be a precept and then another precept. And you're going to grow in him if you'll just yield yourself to him. That's why I'm always telling you to read your Bible. Pray. I don't understand it. Pray. Well, if you don't read very much, you're never going to understand it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry to say, but the first time I started reading the Bible, I, I mean, I was like totally confused. <laughs> you know, when you're first saved, the first thing you want to do is go to Revelation. Find out what's going on. And then you get over there and you go, I don't have a clue what this is talking about. <laughs> So he said, I better go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. But God will bring you along. God will show you things in the future. Just don't, don't lose heart. Don't, don't get weary in well-doing. That's what he told him. Don't get weary in well-doing. He said, you'll reap if you don't faint. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't go back. Amen. Amen. And if you haven't come forward, I guess what? Today would be a good day. That's right. That's right. To say, Jesus, I want you in my life. If what this preacher is saying is true, I know that if I give my heart and life to you, I'm going to get in the battle. I'm going to get in the storm. But I'm going to, I've got them anyway. That's right. That's right. But I'm going to have you to help me. Amen. 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 He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You can't outdo him. You can't, sometimes you can't live with him, but you know you can't live without him. That's right. He's a friend. Generational blessings. Let's pass some things on, okay? Amen. Will you help me? Yes. I mean, I'm serious. We're a, cha we're a church family. Will you help me? Amen. And pass it on. Thank you, Peggy, for what you do. I, I, I'm so encouraged every time you tell me somebody came into the store and you prayed for them. Amen. You know what? There, there's nothing wrong with that. If you go out with your lost friends, and I think you should, I think you should be able to have some lost friends. Because they're never going to find Jesus if you don't go and minister to them. But when it's time to sit down to have a meal, just say, hey, fellas, is it okay? Could I just offer a prayer to God and thank him for the meal that we're about to receive? Don't be bashful. Don't be backward. Don't be ashamed, for one thing. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father, which is in heaven. So, you know, you have opportunities from time to time just to show a little love and kindness that will challenge and change people. Hallelujah. I'm done. Go ahead, Chris. Caleb. <laughs> it seems like all I could see was a struggle. Maybe that's you.
God bless you. Thank you for being part of this service today. I love you, and I appreciate you. And uh, some folks have been asking about uh, Bob and Karen. They uh, felt like the Holy Spirit was leading them somewhere else, and so they won't be coming here anymore unless God changes their mind and they come back. We left the door open. Pastor Chris and I visited with them. We love them. We're, we're heartbroken, basically, because we got so used to him being part of our worship. But, uh, you know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit starts dealing with people about doing something different, uh, there's some folks out there that sometimes they just obey and they do it. So I want anybody to think anything's wrong. They love everybody. They just felt like God was leading them in a different direction. And I wanted to kind of clear the air this morning before we leave, just so that everybody don't sit around and wonder, what happened to Bobby Karen? <laughs> okay? And if you get a chance to love on them a little bit, I'm sure they would love to hear from you. Uh, but th this is where, where we're at right now with this, all right? But we're not quitting. We're not stopping. We're going to go forward as far as the Lord Jesus will let us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord Jesus. Remember that you are part of, of the generation that's going to usher in a new generation of believers. Do your part. In Jesus' name. Pastor Chris, this message. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for your precious presence that's been here so mighty all morning, Lord. Father, we look to you. We need you. We lean on you, God. Help us to what we heard today, God, to apply it, Lord, throughout this week, Lord, and remember, oh God, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, yes. and that we are yours, and we are redeemed, and we have authority in your word, and we can stand on your word, and Father, that we know, God, no matter what we face this week, Lord, you are with us. Yes. And Father, you're going to, you've got a plan, Lord. You've got, a, you've got a plan, Lord. And I thank you for that, God. And for each and every one of us, I thank you for, I just felt such a spirit of conviction here today. I pray if anyone gave their hearts to you in that prayer, they would tell somebody, I gave my life to Jesus. Father, give us boldness as Pastor spoke of this morning, Lord, to stand up and to share you with the lost and dying world. I mean, we don't know what tomorrow may bring, but God help us, Lord, to be all that we can be every single day. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Could I ask, uh, just my mother-in-law was with us last week in service, and my sister-in-law uh, brought her up here in the car, and uh, she was taking stuff out to the car on Monday to get ready to leave and fell off my porch and broke her foot. And so her daughter flew up here uh, to drive them back home. And so they were here till Friday. Uh, so keep them in prayer if you would. I sure would appreciate it. It was one of those things you just don't expect, but then it happened. We were sitting in the living room and all of a sudden we heard Jackie outside screaming and, uh, you know, she's such a jokester, I kind of thought maybe she was faking, but, but she wasn't faking. And ended up going to urgent care, and they had to tie her foot up, told her to go to an orthopedic surgeon when she gets back home. So just keep them in your prayer. Thank God for her daughter that came up and drove them back home. They got home yesterday about 4 o'clock. So, uh, but I appreciate your prayers on your behalf, okay? God bless also, you. also, I just want to say... Um, just keep in mind, we got it in our bulletin. Uh, uh, Sister Jackie Bates and Lloyd will be here. Any of you who know who Jackie is, a lot of you do, some of you don't, but she's just a, a wonderful woman of God that's got a great anointing on her, and she's got a great voice and ministry, and she's going to be with us on June 18th. Yeah. So make plans of it, invite some friends. Um, we just, Jackie loves Pastor Ron, and this church, and she's just... Kayla, she can't wait to sing with us. <laughs> so, uh, we're looking forward to her being here. Mark it on your calendars, invite some friends. It's going to be that morning service. Um, also, we, we have Bible study here. Uh, we have prayer here uh, at 5.30 on Wednesdays, and then we have Bible study at 6.30. So, anyone looking for something to do on a Wednesday night, please come and join us for a time of prayer and Bible study as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a great day.
signature things put on? They're on too? You have four people, we need eight. <laughs> when your bottom mounts them, you need a lot. You can hold them, but it's 